Hello. Today I'm going to be talking about how to attract your dream man ASAP using a three part process that I developed over the last 10 years. Now, let me just start by saying this. I am not usually one for three step this, five, you know, five keys to this. Most of the time, that's usually a bunch of bullshit. And it's usually a one size fits all approach. I'm going to tell you why this three step process is so effective because it's always going to be customized to meet your needs. Now, let me start by telling you a quick little story as to why it's important that you know how this process works because it's how reality works. Once upon a time, there was a woman, there were many women who did not know how dating, love and attraction worked. And so what did they do? They dated based on what they saw in their households growing up. They dated based on what they thought dating was, and they chose partners based on whoever came into their life. Now, what ended up happening for these women? Well, some of them found partners and met them and married, and a small percentage of them were actually happy. They started families and they went on to live their lives. The majority of them ended up in one of the following situations. They ended up marrying somebody with whom they were very unhappy and there wasn't long-term compatibility and they had to deal with the consequences of that, that either ended in divorce or an unhappy marriage. Some of them never went on to find partners and they remained single even though what they wanted most was partnership. Some of them, out of fear of not finding a partner, went on to freeze their eggs because they wanted families so much. Some of them went on to continue playing out the same patterns over and over and over again with a revolving door of men where they didn't realize that they themselves were the common denominator. And some of them just continued going on, hating the process of dating, wanting to get to the quote unquote good part already, and feeling like dating was a means to an end. Now, this sounds kind of grim, but this is the reality. And this is a true story. When we don't understand how dating, love, and attraction work, then we're just shooting blind. And truth be told, nobody taught us how to do this. Like, did your mom or dad sit you down and say, all right, honey, here's how dating works. Here's how attraction works. Here's how you determine what your values are. So when you're going out and you're dating, you ask the man these questions to see if he's aligned with your values. Here's how you have the conversation about commitment. Here's how you have the sexual health talk in an early dating situation. Here's how you navigate conflict. Nobody taught us how to do this. And even though we have all of the information at our fingertips on YouTube, podcasts, lives like this, still, no one taught us how to put all of this together. And my number one desire in any of the things that I teach or share is to make it stupid simple because life is hard enough as it is already. There are so many complexities and dating and love can feel really complex sometimes because our emotions are in the mix. We bring our wounding and past experiences. Partners bring their wounding and past experiences. Sometimes it's magical, sometimes it's a shit show, and everything in between. So I wanted to distill this down in the three most simplest steps. And what I'm about to share with you is a diagnostic. It's a process. It's a way to map yourself and know, okay, what part of the dating love attraction process should I really be looking at? Because there are some parts that we might be really solid in, and I'll show you that in a moment. But what I see with so many of my clients and what my biggest struggle was when I was dating was that <clears throat> I didn't know where I needed to make improvements. And often what I ended up doing is I internalized that there was something wrong with me. If I wasn't meeting men who wanted to commit, if I wasn't getting into a relationship, if I was still single when I wanted to be partnered, what's wrong with me? And if I wasn't blaming myself, then I was blaming men. Oh, how could these guys not want to commit? Don't they see what's in front of them, etc. So I want to make this super simple so that you know exactly where to place yourself. You're not internalizing blame or shame. You're not pointing the finger out at someone else, but that you have a really clear, objective way to understand where the gap is and why you don't yet have the result that you want in your dating and love life. Okay, so 
There are three parts, and you're going to see in a moment that I should be an artist. Here they are. So I'm going to break this down. And you can see this as an equation. The three parts of the equation are the inner work. This is what's happening in your inner world. Sometimes that's where we've got to look when you don't have the results yet in your dating and love life that you would like. Sometimes it's an inner game. It's always an inner game, but sometimes there are some very clear blocks, narratives, or stories here that are keeping you stuck. The next part of this equation is a vision. Do you have a vision? Dating without knowing what you want, who you want to be with, and the, the version of you you would need to be to have that vision fulfilled is like dating blind. And then the last part here is an outer strategy. So we have the inner work, the outer strategy. And this is, do you have a clear, repeatable system or process to reasonably get the results you want? Okay, so let's talk about each part of this. And again, these are the only three things you need. I'm telling you, it's so simple. I do not want dating to feel complex for you. I don't want it to feel like a second job. My deepest desire for you, if you're watching this, is dating feels fun. It feels enlivening. You feel engaged. You feel lit up. You're excited for the process. You're enjoying yourself. You're getting to know yourself. You're really enjoying meeting a variety of men that you go on dates with. That's how it ought to feel. And if it's not feeling that way, then you are likely missing one of these three things. Now, you are not missing something fundamentally inside of you. You are good and whole exactly as you are. That is my self-love PSA. However, let's just see, get boots on the ground and see what's happening here. So, first place to look always is inside. It is very tempting to look outside of us and see how men are the problem, or modern dating sucks, or I hate the apps, or any of the things that we want to do that are so tempting to do when there's actually something happening inside that needs to be addressed with love and care and kindness. So the inner work, here are some of the things that fall into this category. If you don't have the results that you yet want in dating and love, are there old beliefs, ideas, or stories that you hold about yourself, about men, about dating, about relationships that are keeping you stuck and recreating the same painful patterns over and over again. This might be subconscious blocks, subconscious sabotage patterns. This might be attachment wounding. So let me break some of that down a bit and I'll, I'll share from my personal life. Now, for a while when I was dating, I said, oh, I want an emotionally available man, I'm ready, I'm doing the inner work, etc. But there was still some inner work that I had to do before I was ready to attract that kind of man into my life and sustain that kind of relationship. What I didn't realize at the time was that even though I said I wanted an emotionally available man who's ready for commitment, etc., I myself had a deep fear of commitment. And to be honest, I'm still working through it. Commitment in some ways feels very scary for me. And that is because of my attachment wounding. Because of what I saw and experienced growing up, commitment and attachment and closeness and intimacy sometimes feel scary and overwhelming for me. And so I could say consciously that I want one thing, but what's going to happen subconsciously because of some of my early wiring is that I'm going to push it away. So it's like, yes, give me, I want, and whoa, this is scary. And though I wasn't saying, whoa, this is scary out loud to somebody, my actions were speaking for that. So I, in the past, I might have preemptively cut someone off before I really gave them a chance. I might have sabotaged something by, um, let's see, by pointing the finger and blaming someone for something when really it was my responsibility in an early dating scenario. There are all sorts of fun, festive ways that we fuck things up for ourselves. And I don't say that with any judgment. I mean that when I say fuck something up, it's like I say I want something, but I'm acting in direct opposition to that without knowing it. And so I'm ruining my chances at having the love life that I say I want. So in that inner work category, which is where most of us typically have to look, 
And the interesting and sometimes challenging part about the inner work is that this is often in our blind spot. Now, if you're a woman on the path and you're doing inner work and you're on a personal spiritual development path, then you likely know a thing or two about your attachment style, beliefs you hold. You've probably gone back and looked at the relationship your parents had, the relationship you had with your parents or caregivers, and how that has impacted how you show up in adult romantic relationships. And no matter how woke and intelligent we are sometimes, we all have blind spots. This is why it is abundantly important to have a therapist or a coach in your corner helping you to see your blind spots, someone who is lovingly honest with you. And it is important that you're willing to see them if you want to have the dream love life. And I'll tell you more about our mentorship program in a moment because this is exactly what we help women do, is see their blind spots with love so that you don't have to keep hitting your head against the wall when it comes to dating. Now, a couple of questions you can ask to start to illuminate what inner work is there for you is, what do I say I want, but then not allow in? So again, I said I wanted love and intimacy back when I was dating. However, here's what my behavior was doing. I said, I want love. I want intimacy. I want a man. And then when I would get around to the point of being sexually intimate with someone, after the sex happened, I'd kick him out. Or if I was at his place, I would leave. It could have been 2 or 3 a.m. And I am like, I am not staying here because you know what? Waking up to somebody the next morning is so intimate. In some ways, in my body, it feels more intimate than having sex with them the night before with the lights off. It's like waking up, you see someone's most, you know, like... The, the features that they typically don't share. I mean, that's when someone's seeing you like crust in your eyes, morning breath, no makeup on. And so I refused to stay at a man's place or to let him stay at my place. And again, I was saying I wanted love and intimacy and closeness and a man who was committed, but then I was wiggling my way out of commitment and intimacy and letting someone truly see me as I was because I was attached to putting on a show, to wearing a mask, to appearing perfect because coming back to the inner work, the narrative I had is that if I'm not perfect, if I'm not proving myself, then he's going to leave because inside I felt like I wasn't enough fundamentally to keep the love of a man. And again, that came back to attachment wounding from childhood. So you see how deep this area goes. This is normally and usually where we have to look. Now, the other question you can ask yourself, if you want to know if there's some inner work and some inner play for you to explore, and that's the reason why you don't yet have the dating and love life you want, is what do I say I don't want, but I still tolerate? Ooh, this is a good one. I used to say, I don't want someone who's, who doesn't want something serious. Yet, time and time again, early into the dating scenario, someone would transparently tell me, I'm not looking for anything serious. I don't know what I'm looking for. I'm going with the flow. And I would stick around because I had thoughts and ideas of unworthiness and not enoughness. So I took what I could get and I stayed. I said I didn't want somebody who wasn't willing to commit, but I tolerated people who didn't want to commit to me and who either said it outright or whose actions were showing me that. So those two questions again, what do I say I want, but then I don't allow in? What do I say I don't want, but I tolerate? So that's the first part of this equation, the inner work and play. It doesn't have to be work all the time. We can play with it. Second part of this equation is a vision. Now, if you are missing any three parts of this equation, you probably don't have the love life you want. And if you do, then congratulations, because somewhere along the way, without knowing it, you had these three parts in place. And or the universe is like really showing up in your corner, and that's phenomenal. But for everybody else, I want to give you a very simple way to look at this. So part two, vision. Dating without a vision, if you want long-term commitment, compatibility, a serious relationship with a man who's emotionally available, who has a vision for his life, who takes the lead, who is fully committed to himself and to you as his partner, and maybe who wants a family, marriage, kids, 
You must have a vision. Without a vision, you're dating blind. And you're not going to know if a man is truly a fit or not because there is no standard by which you are assessing the relationship and the men you're dating and yourself. This is not just about creating a rubric and seeing if a man lines up with your standards. Yes, we want you to have standards. We want you to have values. Again, I'm going to bring this back to ourselves and the inner work. Here are the questions that I ask to help my clients create a vision. And these, these are the questions I ask myself as well. So in terms of relationships, what is the stream relationship like? So if you could describe everything about it, what does it look like? How does it feel? What does the relational space allow you and your partner to do? Who does it allow you and your partner to be? Because what I find in my relationship is that there is me, there is my partner, and there is the relationship. There is the third entity, the thing that gets formed because him and I have come together. And when our energies combine, we create a relational space. It's the space between us and the space around us that contains us. This is a relationship. The relationship and the trust and the safety that we as individuals have invested into building the relationship now holds and contains us in a way that we didn't have before we really invested into the relationship itself. So we're forming a third. We're not, we didn't form a biological child, but before you get to popping babies out, you're forming a third party, a third entity. That third has an energy. It has a life. And when you pour into it intentionally, it has its own personality and vibe. So how are you pouring into the relationship? Unless you have a clear vision for what you want your relationship to look like, how you want it to feel, how you want it to be able to support you and your partner when things are great and when things are hard, unless you have a vision for that, then you're flying by the seat of your pants and maybe you'll end up getting what you want. But will you, if you don't even know what you want, likely what's going to happen is you're going to get some amalgamation of your past wounding and trauma, his past wounding and trauma, a lot of good memories and fun mixed in, but something that's not intentionally created. And if you're here, if you're tuning into my content, if you follow me, if you know me personally, then I know that what you want is to have the most intentionally crafted, expansive, awesome relationship ever with an awesome partner and with you showing up as an awesome person and partner. In order to do that, you have to have a vision. It's like a pilot wouldn't get into the driver's seat of a plane without knowing where he's taking all the passengers. There has to be a vision. There has to be a destination or a goal that we're trying to get to, not only because it helps us get there, but it gives us purpose. This is why we feel so ignited when we have a purpose, when, when we're working on a goal for a project. It could be something as simple as a weight loss goal, a goal in our business, a goal in how we show up this week. Unless we have a goal or a vision, it's very easy to get lost, to meander, to go on tangents, to have um, you know, our old triggers pull us off course, distractions pull us off course. And most of the world operates in that way. So you must have a vision if you want to create a relationship that completely blows your mind and your heart wide open and is unlike you've ever, anything you've ever experienced before. A vision is the only thing that's going to help you create something you've never experienced. Because if you've never experienced it, then you don't know what it feels like. You probably don't know in your mind, in your head, how to create it. The vision comes from the heart, comes from intuition, comes from whatever messages you receive from on high, from source, from universe, in meditation, wherever. The vision is going to be what pulls you into a reality that you've never experienced. So you must have one. So you could ask questions like, what is this dream relationship like? How do I feel? What does it allow me to do that I can't do now? How does it support my partner and I in good times and in hard times? Who is this dream guy that I'm wanting to call in and attract? How does he show up? 
How does he lead his life? What values does he probably operate by? How does he show up to me? How does he handle hard situations? Who is the version of me? This is the important part. Who is the version of me that naturally creates this dream relationship and attracts this dream man? Because it's not about looking outside of us. Like, oh, the man needs to be like this. I've got my 20 point list. He has to be this tall and have these facial features and blah, 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 blah. That journal about it. I, I encourage it. Get to know those things. But really what's going to get you what you want is if you know all of the external things and then you ask, who would I have to be? What version of me would I have to show up as to call in the dream man and have this dream relationship? Because I'm going to tell you one thing that I am still actively learning in my relationship and I'm five years in. I am still continuously every day learning who is the version of me that has, that calls forth the best from my partner? Because I have shown up at many points in my own relationship as the version of me that attracts some challenging qualities in my partner because he's responding to how I'm showing up. And so, ladies, for those of you who are single, the adventure doesn't end when you find the man. It's not like you find the man and then all of a sudden, boop, boop, Happily ever after, riding off into the sunset like Cinderella. Ooh, sometimes this is when the work and the fun and the really rolling your sleeves up begins in relationship. So there's a lot to look forward to. And there's a lot of growing and expanding you're going to do. And I am constantly asking myself, who do I need to be to call forth the version of my partner that I want to be with? Do I want to be with the version of my partner who's here right now? And of course, I don't have any control over him. But in my internal reflections, I ask, if I want to be with a partner who feels respected by me, who feels cherished, adored, who's the version of me and how do I show up? What do I think? How do I, uh, what do I believe about myself, about him? How do I behave? How do I like, what are my actions? So always bringing the inquiry back to our self when we are talking about our vision and what we want to create. Now, so far, for those of you just joining, we've talked about the inner work being the first part of the equation for understanding what is standing in your way of having the dream life, love life you want and knowing how to get there on the fastest, most fun path possible. The second part is the vision. The third part here, now we're going to the outermost layer, is the outer strategy. You must have the inner work. You must be actively doing the inner work and inner inquiry from a place of curiosity and love, not from a place of lack and not enoughness. Big point here, because you can be doing the inner work because you think you're not enough and you gotta keep reading the next book, listening to the next podcast, hiring the next coach, because you're operating from a fundamental sense of lack. No, boo-boo, you ain't lacking for nothing. Let's just get that clear right now. You have everything you need. You are enough. You are whole. And you may have some beliefs or ideas or stories or narratives standing in the way of you having the love life you want. Not your fault, but as someone who's doing the inner work, it is now your responsibility if you want the result. So inner work, you must have a vision outer strategy, okay? So once these two are taken care of, the inner work and the vision, then and only then do we look at the outer strategy for what you're actually gonna do. So these are the actions you take on a regular basis. Now, let's make a, um, a health uh, analogy. The outer strategy in health, for example, say you wanna get fit or you wanna lose 10 pounds, the outer strategy would be the actual actions you take. So maybe you are increasing your protein, you're doing strength training three times a week, and you're increasing your water intake. This is the what you're actually doing that somebody could look at you and they could observe you doing that. This is the outer behavior and action. The inner behavior and action in this example is maybe you're overcoming limiting beliefs about the fact that you get to be healthy or that you can lose 10 pounds or whatever it is. And then the vision is 
You have a vision for how you're going to feel and how you're going to show up in the world and what's going to be available to you when you are in a body that feels healthy and well and vital. Okay, outer strategy, coming back to this. What does this look like in dating and love? So most women date with no strategy whatsoever. And that's for a few reasons. One, we weren't taught that we should have a strategy. We have this romanticized belief that it should just happen. It should be easy. The moment you meet him, you're just gonna know. Like everything is this weird fucking fairy tale and I don't understand that because I bought into that belief for many years that I would just know it should just happen. Relationship should be easy. If it's hard, he's not the one. If it's hard, it's toxic. That's not true. There can be toxic traits to relationships and that shows us where the inner work is. Now, nine times out of 10, if we're operating in reality, it's not always gonna feel easy. We have narratives and ideas and beliefs that we're overcoming that are keeping us from having the love life we want. So, unless we have an outer strategy, in addition to everything I just mentioned, then we're kind of just like throwing darts with the blindfold on. Like there's no way we can really know if we have a chance at hitting the bullseye if we don't also have a repeatable system to date, to use in dating. And so the other reason why a lot of women don't have this is not only because there's this romanticized idea that it should just be easy and it should just happen and we should just somehow fall into a chance meeting with Prince Charming, it's that a lot of people think a strategy takes the romantic component out of dating and it doesn't it makes sure that you are dating intelligently because i know if you're here you probably really value your time and energy and you don't want to just be willy-nilly dating wasting your time because you work you have passions and hobbies that you're pursuing you want to have time to yourself you want to have time for friends and family so you have to date with a clear strategy if you don't want to be spinning yourself in circles forever feeling burnt out, feeling like dating is a second job, wondering if and when you're ever going to meet the guy, and then swearing it off because you feel hopeless and burnt out, going into not dating, and then finally working up the hope and energy again to date only to play out the same pattern because you don't have a strategy. Bottom line, have a strategy. Doesn't have to be one that someone gives you. Choose one that works for you. I'm going to give you some examples. These are examples that women inside our mentorship program are actively using. Many of them have already met their man. One of them is currently planning her wedding. She's got the ring. She just did her dress fitting. One of them has been dating her partner for six months now. Another just became exclusive. So I'm telling you, strategies work. This is why businesses have, businesses have strategies. It's why they have a vision and goal. It's why they do leadership development for their people because they want to get the result. For businesses, the result is bottom line. The result is profit and impact. Hopefully it's impact. Sometimes it's not. Your result is attracting your dream partner and creating your dream relationship. Strategy must be present. Okay, one very simple strategy. If you're using dating apps, you might swipe on the apps for 20 minutes a day and make sure you have one date set up per week. Very simple. This is a repeatable system that you can use. And you know that if you're meeting one new guy a week, or you're meeting one new guy and going on a second or third date with a guy that there could be something with, then you are maximizing your chances of getting the result. Now, we're not attached to this strategy, finding you your husband tomorrow. Don't future trip and put that burden on yourself and all the men you're dating. Still show up to dating with a desire to meet your person, but with an openness to things going differently than maybe you planned. And that's a mindset strategy. So maybe you're on the apps, you swipe for 20 minutes a day so as to save yourself from burnout, and you go on one new date per week and any other follow-up dates. Now, I also talk about really clear strategies for dating using the app so that you can meet your soulmate match ASAP in one of my courses called the successful swipe. So if you're hearing this and you're interested in that, it's going to be in the show notes because I'm going to post this as a podcast and a YouTube video, but you can also just go to the successful swipe.com. 
super affordable in less than two hours. I'm going to show you how to fucking master the game of dating apps, use them intentionally, eliminate dating app burnout, and match with your man ASAP in a way that feels really good for you. I am not here for tips, tricks, and hacks, and like sleazy pickup lines. Not my jam. We're doing the deep stuff in here. Okay, that's one potential strategy. Another potential strategy, which one of the women in our mentorship program is using, which I am also going to share about, because if you're watching this and you want support in your dating and love life, and you're like, girl, I gotta get there ASAP. I'm running a business, I'm working, I ain't got time to fuck around with this. Tell me how to do this. Help me illuminate my blind spots so I can just enjoy dating and meet my man. If that's you, I want you to DM me the word aligned, A-L-I-G-N-E-D, because enrollment is open for our mentorship program from now until this Friday. We have three spots available and then doors close. So if you want master coaching and you want strategies like this, you want people to help you, master coaches, illuminate your blind spots and resolve them quickly, easily, painlessly, and you want to get the result, your dream love life ASAP, this is for you. Okay, DM me the word aligned. Now, another strategy could be going on two new dates per month with new men and, exactly, and then going to two singles events per month. So you're still doing one activity per week, a new date or a singles event. Super clear and easy. The reason I'm sharing these with you is because our nervous systems feel relaxed and regulated and safe when it knows what to predict, when it knows what's coming. That's why sometimes it feels unsettling when someone just springs plans on us or they like change plans real fast. It's like, whoa, I didn't expect that. Give yourself a plan, something to expect so that you know, okay, every week I'm, I'm going on one new date or each day I'm swiping for 20 minutes or every other week I'm going to one singles event. Give yourself a plan and then create the, the conditions necessary to be able to follow up and deliver on that plan. Now, I'm just giving you the very beginning steps. Inside of our mentorship program, we help you create a custom plan that works for you so that this works for your lifestyle, your preferences. If you don't like dating apps, we're not gonna give you a plan that includes dating apps. If you exclusively use dating apps, that's what's gonna be in your plan. We want this to work for you. It has to work for your lifestyle in order for you to get this. Now, another strategy could be asking your friends to be introduced to new men in between you using the apps or going to singles events. There are all sorts of ways we can meet men. I often hear women say, there are no good guys out there. I don't know how to meet good men. Girl, the men are plenty. Let me just tell you, if you have a belief that there are no good men out there, that all the good men are taken, that no men are doing their inner work or can meet you on your level or no men want to commit, you're wrong. And I never say those words to people. I never tell people they're wrong or incorrect. I will tell you categorically that belief is wrong. It is incorrect. It is not true. It is false. It is a lie. There are plenty of good men out there, quality, quality men who want a relationship, who want to commit, who are looking for a partner to be exclusively committed to, who want a family, who want kids, who have great jobs, who are leaders in their lives. They are everywhere. Hear me when I say this. They are all around you. They could be in line at the grocery store. They could be on the machine next to you at the gym. It could be somebody you already know. It could be a friend of a friend. It could be a man on a dating app. High quality men are out there. They are everywhere, period. And I know that because I have many male friends in my life that I would set any of my girlfriends up with because I trust the integrity of these men. I see many of my girlfriends partnered with these men. I come across so many good men on a regular basis. Some are partnered, many are single. I should honestly become a matchmaker. I would love it. But I'm saying that because I want you to get the idea out of your mind that there are no good men, that they're already taken, there are no men that can meet you, blah, 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 blah. If that is a belief you hold, 
Come back to this part of the equation, the inner work. Where might you have beliefs, ideas, narratives about men, dating, love, the possibility of love for you that are getting in your way of you having what you want? What is it costing you to still hold on to that belief? It's costing you the love you want. What do you get from it? You get to stay stuck. You get to stay comfortable. You get to be right in air quotes. We love being right. We love proving ourselves right. And sometimes we'll do that at the cost of us actually having the result we want, which is love. So many women do this. I did this for years. If I can save you any amount of time, energy, heartache, if you have beliefs that are keeping you from love, figure out what they are and kick them the fuck out because you will ruin your chances at this if you're not doing the inner work to figure out what these beliefs are and to rewrite them. This is what we help you do in the mentorship program. If you're just joining, I've been talking about aligned attraction. My partner, Ani, and I are two master intimacy coaches and we coach you through all of your dating and love challenges so you can attract your dream partner and have the love life you want as soon as possible, as fun as possible. It's gotta be fun, boo. We don't want you to fucking bust your ass trying to get here just to be burnt out when you get the man. No, we want you to have fun along the way. We want you to feel good, sexy, alive. Inner work is required, especially if you're creating a kind of relationship that you've never had before. A vision is required. Having a strategy for dating is required. All of this is going to make it so much more fun and easy because this is just how it works. So unless you want to keep hitting your head against a wall, playing out the same patterns, attracting the same kinds of men that you don't see a future with, or ending up in the same patterns where you're in situationships where men don't want to commit, on and on, fill in the blank with your specific pattern that feels very frustrating for you, or where you swear off dating, unless you want that to continue being your reality, then you got to use these three steps. If you're just joining, go back and re-listen to this because it is freaking gold. This is all you need. It is that simple, I promise you. Do not make this any harder than it has to be, babe. Life is already hard enough as it is. There's already enough shit going on in the world that is back, it's crazy. Make your dating and love life fun, easy, simple. Feel sexy, feel empowered, feel your best, and this is how you do it. Inner work plus vision plus outer strategy equals you getting to attract your dream partner and have your dream love life as soon as possible, as fun as possible. Last time, if you want our support because you don't want to waste time anymore, maybe you're a woman who's in her 30s and you want a family, you want kids, and you know that there's a biological clock ticking and you don't want to waste time, join the mentorship program. Send me a DM with the word aligned. Let me know that you want in and I will send you the link to apply. We have three spots available. Enrollment for this round closes this Friday, the 29th. So get in here because the spots are gonna go very fast. We are going to teach you all parts of this equation. Inner work, we're gonna help you illuminate your blind spots and lovingly, easefully work through them. This does not have to be like pulling teeth, I promise you. We can have fun and feel sexy while doing the inner work. People aren't telling you that. We're going to help you create a vision. Who's this, what's this dream relationship? Who's your dream partner? And most importantly, who would you have to be? What version of you would you need to be to attract this dream partner and have this dream relationship? And then we help you create a custom strategy for you in your dating and love life that works for you, that works for your preferences, for your lifestyle, so that you have a clear, repeatable system to get onto dates with great men who want the same things as you, who have an aligned vision, someone you could actually see a future with. And that is what helps you meet your dream partner. It is this simple. All right, last time. If you want our support in attracting your dream partner and creating your dream relationship, ASAP, DM me the word aligned. If you're listening to this on the podcast or YouTube, then reach out to me on Instagram at Lee Noto underscore. You can also email me hello at Lee Noto.com. Let me know that you want our mentorship because you don't want to run in circles anymore. Wasting time. You want your dream man ASAP. Here's how we're going to help you do it. 
If you're just joining, highly recommend that you watch the replay of this. And if you're listening to the podcast or YouTube, then enjoy. All right, babes, I'm sending you so much love and good vibes. What I want for you more than anything is for dating and love to feel easy, to feel simple. It doesn't have to be so hard. I promise you, I promise you, I want to help you make it simple and fun. Reach out to me. Let me know you're watching. Let me know you're listening. Let me know what resonated for you. Let me know what else you'd like to hear about so I can come on live, make podcast videos and YouTube videos, and share the most potent things that you want to know about. If you want the mentorship, DM me the word aligned or reach out to me on Instagram at Lee Noto. We also have courses for those of you babes who like to do things self-paced. So DM me, I'll send you the info on the courses. We have one on how to use the dating apps to meet your soulmate ASAP, how to understand where you have limiting beliefs and subconscious sabotage patterns. And then we have a course that is our full dating system that is going to help you learn everything you need to know about dating and relationships in the fastest, most fun way possible in bite-sized videos so that you can get on to attracting your dream partner. Many, many offerings for you to support you on your dating and love journey. Wherever you're at, I am sending you so much love and good vibes, and I can't wait to hear from you.